Hey everyone, this is going to be the first video in the coding series in which we're going to build the Vision Pro WallArt app I have running in the simulator here on the left. Um, I have a previous video in which I demoed this in more detail, so I'll link that somewhere on screen and in the description down below. But as a quick recap, this demo consists of a character we have here on the right and a canvas which we can see on the wall and a little bit of uh, UI that just welcomes us. And we can tap on the character and it'll ask us if we wanna create some doodle art. So we can say yes. And then we can draw on this canvas and the character will shoot some sparkles at the wall uh, and that will result in an image change. And so what I would like to do is just um, code this from scratch um, and you can find the final source code in this GitHub repository, which I'll link in the description down below as well. Um, and um, it's, uh, yeah, right here. The other thing you'll need is Xcode 15, the beta version, and you'll need to create an Apple developer account if you don't have that. And when you install it, make sure to also uh, include the Vision OS simulator in that process. And if you've done all that, uh, you can start to create your project, which we're gonna do. So when you open Xcode 15 beta, um, just select create new project. And then over here, we wanna gonna, we're gonna wanna select Vision OS app next. We can call this wall art and select your team, set an organization identifier that's unique um, we're going to want to set the initial scene to be of type window, which is going to uh, render the welcome screen. Uh, we have up here, welcome to generative doodle art in Vision Pro. And we're going to want to have an immersive space, um, which we'll set to mixed. Um, we want an immersive space because we want to have the canvas on the wall and the character um, here on the right. And so we basically need full control of the user's environment to place 3D objects. And we want it to be in augmented reality, i.e. mixed. Um, if you're going to go for full, that would be sort of like a virtual reality uh, immersive space. And then we can go next. I'll just put this on my desktop. You can obviously save this wherever you want. And once we have this, we can, um, build and run this app. So let's just do this. I'm just gonna select the second simulator here so we can run the two demos side by side. And let's um, open the simulators. Um, I'm just going to, yeah, open them side by side here. Uh, let me make sure that I actually keep everything in vision. So, um, here we go. Um, and on the right side, you can see the app loading that we just basically instantiated. And this is sort of like the default app that gets created for us. Um, we have this split navigation view with some UI. We can even open this immersive uh, space um, that shows us these two spheres right here. But that's not actually what we want. We want to recreate what we have on the left-hand side here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this so we hide the canvas. And basically the main entry point of an app is always this abstract. And this abstract contains a body. And this body contains uh, one or more windows um, or scenes rather. And uh, there's different types of scenes. Um, there's window groups and there's immersive spaces. And inside of window groups, there's uh, 2D window groups, which are just referred to as window typically. And then there's volumes, which are three-dimensional um, window groups. And what we wanna do is we wanna, and, and, and I guess one more thing to note is when you're launching a Vision OS app, the system will by default only launch the first scene that is defined in the body. So in this case, it is this window group, 
that contains the content view. And the content view is what we're seeing here on the right. And that's not the UI that we want, obviously. So I'm just going to delete some stuff. I will keep these two environment variables, open immersive space and dismiss immersive space, because we'll make use of them very shortly. But we do not want this navigation split view. So I'm just gonna select all of this and I'm going to delete it. And so I'm just, for, for now, I'm just gonna put an empty view in here and I'm gonna rerun this. And what we should see now is that we should basically just see an empty view. And um, that's what you, we see right now as expected. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cre recreate this little um, welcome view right here um, inside of this window group we have. So let me do just that. Okay. Okay. So now that we've built this, I just created a V stack, which includes a text field. And I just added in the text, welcome to generative art in vision pro. I set the font to extra large title too. I gave it some padding and I gave this V stack a glass background effect. And so we can see what that looks like right here. Um, but as you can tell, probably, it does not look exactly like uh, in the final version. Um, we actually don't want this uh, big window uh, with this default size. We just want to uh, see the text field. So the way to do, change that is just we can go back up here to the window group and we will change the window style to um, plain. And if we rerun that, what we should see is that we get the output that we expect, which we do. So now we have that part recreated. All right, um, next up is we wanna just create a basic view model um, that we can use to store state in our app. Because as you remember, um, we basically have this flow where the user can tap on the character, uh, the character will say something, um, th th there's a button tap, based on that button tap, we wanna navigate to this doodle screen right here, and um, we need to track some state. And so the view model is going to be responsible for tracking the state. So let's implement that. And I'm gonna create a new file um, which we'll just call view model. And it's a standard Swift file. And let's just create that. And we can implement this uh, as follows.
Okay, so what I just did is I created an enum called flow state, which basically contains uh, the state. It, it, it represents the different states that the application can be in. And then in the view model, which is a class, um, I created a variable flow state that just contains the current state. And I uh, included a Swift macro, the observable Swift macro, which is new uh, with uh, Xcode 15. And this actually replaces observable object and it improves it in several different ways. And the way it works is that Swift UI will be able to listen to state in the view model um, and it will get updates because it's wrapped with the observable uh, Swift macro and it will be able to update its state and UI state based on any uh, changes that occur um, here. This will make more sense once we actually make use of the flow state variable in code later on. Um, but what we want to do right now is we just want to go back to our um, wall art app struct and just here at the top, we just want to call, uh, we just want to say state private var view model equals view model. And what this state variable, uh, what the state um, property wrapper does is it tells the app that we basically want to persist um, this instance of view model throughout the uh, existence of our application lifecycle. Um, and you need to wrap, uh, you need to use a state property wrapper every time you want to uh, mutate uh, a variable um, contained in this struct. Otherwise, um, you will get a compilation error. And so what we can do now is um, we can say something like, dot environment and we can pass in the view model and what this will do is in the environment context of um, the content view we're going to inject the view model so that the view the content view now has access to the view model all right now um, as you could tell uh, with the original app, what we're going for is that when you actually launch the app, um, we want to immediately see the full immersive space. Um, because as you uh, could tell, um, we had the image show up on launch and we had the character show up on launch as well. Now the, the, the documentation actually outlines a path um, for doing just that. But when I was playing around with this and trying to implement it, that didn't work. Um, it, it appeared like a full immersive space would always show up as a volume. And so um, the way we worked around this was by basically going into the content view and then down here um, adding an on appear modifier um, on the VStack itself. And then uh, in here, what we did was we could say task and we can call await open immersive space. And what we wanna do is we wanna uh, call um, open immersive space with an ID. And that's basically how you tell the system to try to enter an immersive space. Now. If we go back to the wall art abstract, we can see that we're creating an immersive space right here with the uh, ID immersive space. And so if we um, now go back to the content view and paste in the ID of that space right here and run it, what we should ex uh, expect to happen is that the uh, on appear modifier gets called when the content view gets loaded, which then triggers the immersive space to appear. And that worked as we expected, uh, as you can tell, because we now have these two spheres um, of the immersive space that are part of 
sort of the default application show up. And so now we're basically at this point where we have an immersive space um, running um, and we have some welcome UI. Um, and so that's where I'll leave it for today, um, for this video. And um, I'll continue in the next one with um, building out this app, including the canvas, placing the canvas on the wall, creating the uh, 3D character and making sure that that character appears in space as we'd expect it, attaching gestures to it, attaching UI to it, and so forth. So um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.